We want something different on our canning shelves. We've already added a few new things to our pantry this year. But this fall season really got us craving some apples. Unfortunately, our apple trees failed this year, so we decided that we wanted to support a local orchard. We found a place called Nana's Orchard. They're not organic, but they said they use as little sprays as possible, and they have the best unpasteurized apple cider I've had in a long time. If you're in central Ohio, be sure to check them out. So what are we gonna do with all of these apples? We are going to make applesauce. Because we're more than farmers. I'm soaking these apples in apple cider vinegar with the mother before we actually cut them up and start cooking them. I'm just doing this because they're not organic. Normally I'm really picky about getting organic fruit, especially apples and grapes and things that are on the dirty dozen list. But the apples that I get at Aldi, yes, they're organic, but I don't know, I guess I just don't trust them nearly as much as I would getting them from a local orchard. And even though the orchard isn't organic, I still, I just feel like there's still gonna be more nutritional value in these apples. <laughs> so we just decided to go with these apples. We talked to the farm before we bought them. They said they do the barest amount of spraying as possible. When I was a teenager, my mom told me a story of one of her close friends who was very allergic to pesticides and chemicals of any kind. And she was able to eat non-organic fruit if she soaked it in an apple cider vinegar rinse. That story made a big impact on me. And ever since I've just, if I do have to get non-organic fruit for some reason or another, I soak it in apple cider vinegar because it's the best that I know how to do. And also, I was encouraged because these apples are definitely not perfect. They have some bug bites on them. A couple of them had rotten spots and I guess I just am comforted by the fact that they're not just like spotless and perfect. Our family is growing and my kids are eating so much more food than they used to. Our 11 year old eats more than Cody does. So we actually ran out of jars this year because I have filled so many of them. So we had to go and buy a bunch more jars. According to my mom, a bushel of apples makes approximately 20 quarts of applesauce. We got two bushels of apples from the orchard yesterday, so I'm figuring around 35 to 40 quarts, something like that. That's how many jars I'm gonna wash up and have ready at least. We're just gonna do most of this applesauce plain. I'll have to see once like how sweet it is. The orchard had Cortland apples on sale, so we got mostly Cortland, and then we also got Jonagold, Ida Red, and Smoothie. And they all taste really, really good. I can't wait to see how this applesauce tastes. I'm really hoping that I won't have to put any kind of sweetener in it. Most of this applesauce, I'm just gonna make plain, but we also have some fun applesauce that we wanna try too. I'm sure there's a hundred ways of preparing apples for applesauce. This is the way that my mom taught me at home. So this is the way I'm going to be doing it today. I'm not gonna be peeling my apples. I'm just going to quarter them. And the only part of the apple that I'm going to cut out is this tiny little belly button thing down here. It has fuzzies in it that will not come out with the strainer. And so it'll look, if you leave that on, it'll look like there's little hairs in your applesauce. You wanna cut on one side of that little belly button and on the other side, and you wanna make so that that little, what is it called? It's gross to call it a belly button. You wanna make so this thing is on one quarter of your apple and then you can just cut it off like that and you're done. I also, if there's a stem, I, I like pulling the stem off. I don't think you technically have to, but I leave the seeds on, I leave the skin on, everything on. We are gonna cook these down with a little bit of water and then we'll put them through a strainer. We 
We eat a ton of apples for snacks. The kids love to have apples and peanut butter or just an apple for a bedtime snack or a midday snack. So we definitely know our apples. I usually get the organic Gala apples from Kroger or Aldi. These apples just like knock the socks off of those other apples. They are so, so good. They're very, they're very flavorful. Some of them are tart, but even, even though they're tart, they still have a really strong sweetness. It's hard to explain. They're just so good. I'm thinking of going back to the orchard and getting even more of these apples and seeing if they'll store in the root cellar. I'm not sure if our cold room, I call it the root cellar, it's actually a cold room. I'm not sure if our cold room is quite cold enough for apples or not. We want to say thank you to Element for sponsoring today's video. We talk about them so often because we like them so much. It's an electrolyte drink mix that's good for you in a lot of different situations. I use it with the running and weight training that I do, and we take it with us on trips and adventures. We love it because it's got clean ingredients in it with no sugar, coloring, fillers, or anything artificial. My favorite flavor is the grapefruit. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. And if that's not replaced, it's common to experience stuff like muscle cramps and fatigue. Element has the ingredients in it to help with that. And I did say that the grapefruit is my favorite flavor. That's in the stick packs. In the sparkling drinks that they have, my favorite flavor is the citrus. These things are so good. And if you haven't tried them yet, you really should. If you use our link in the description, you will get a free sample pack of eight single serving packets with any order. And that deal is only available through our link, so go check it out below. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom of these apples so that they don't scorch. How much water you need to cook your apples down is really gonna depend on the variety of apple, like if it's a hard apple or a soft apple. Some apples get really runny when they cook and others just stay more, stay more firm. So I'm just gonna have to experiment a little bit because this is like a bunch of different kinds, but for now I'm just putting about that much water in the bottom. We're gonna cook these and see how they cook down. smell absolutely incredible. Oh my goodness. I want these like really, really soft so that they go through the strainer really well. So I'm just gonna let these cook for a little bit yet. While we're sitting here cutting up apples, we were talking about applesauce. And this is like sparking so many memories because growing up, every single year, my mom did like so much applesauce. She told me this morning that she actually one time did five bushels at a time, which meant she did like a hundred quarts of applesauce in one day, which is insane. But we had applesauce at like every single meal growing up. And then Cody was saying that his relatives also had applesauce at every meal. So for me growing up, applesauce was not a delicacy. It was just like, we had it all the time. And so after we got married, I kind of got away from it because it was just like old hat, but now, I catch myself getting hungry for it every now and then and my kids think it's amazing. So it's one of those nostalgic things. For me growing up, we had applesauce at not every meal, but pretty often. But I remember being around my dad's side of the family and they had applesauce at every meal. They often did frozen applesauce and it was really smooth and really good. And they would also have cottage cheese at every meal. And I remember doing this at home too. You'd have little pile of applesauce, little pile of cottage cheese, and sometimes you get a bite of both at the same time. It's so good. It's so weird, cottage cheese and applesauce. I think these apples here are ready. Most of them are very soft. Doesn't that smell amazing? It smells good. Like some of them just like went to mush like this and then others held their shape a little better. Okay, so now is when we need the strainer from up here. Up here with all the other random things that don't get used very often. We got this as a wedding gift and I don't think we've used it yet, like 12 years ago. Okay. 
there is an instruction booklet in here, but I can just go by the picture. right here doesn't it I could look at the instructions but then where does my masculinity go <laughs> so in theory apples will go in the top up here they will go through this like mesh strainer here the good stuff should come here oh, wait right yeah. yes and then the peels and seeds the pulp go comes here, here. and yeah. I think I'm gonna run the pulp through like at least twice to get everything out of it this is so nostalgic for me I did this like Hundreds of times as a kid, probably not hundreds. And I've never done it once. <laughs> wow, see all the applesauce that's coming back out of that pulp? I'm gonna put a little bit on a plate and put it in the freezer and see Why? how it tastes. Oh. It is getting really warm in here from cooking all these apples. I took my hoodie off, got a shirt on that I got at the Homesteaders of America conference that we were just at last weekend. Had a lot of fun there and I just wanna say I was really happy to meet all of you guys that we met there. It was very encouraging. I mentioned in a post that I did recently on YouTube that it inspired us to try a few new things here on our homestead. I won't tell you what all we think we might have coming, but just know that we've got more things coming. <laughs> Should be cool by now. That is really good. Want to try? Mm-hmm. I don't think it needs much sugar, if any. Maybe just a little tiny bit. This first big bowl of applesauce, I'm just going to sweeten very lightly with a tiny bit of maple syrup. I'm trying to stay away from sugar, like even evaporated cane juice sugar. I just don't like to have a ton of that in our diet. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of maple syrup and then for some of our other fun apple sauces, we're gonna do some experiments. At the Homesteaders of America conference, I tasted a raspberry applesauce and it was so good and I was like, we could do that. So I'm going to cook some raspberries with the apples and then this will strain out all the seeds and I'm really excited to see if it'll make a nice pink tasty applesauce. And then I think we'll do one more with like a cinnamon sugar or something. That's what Cody takes him back to his childhood. So we'll see if we can recreate that for him. I'm also just gonna do a tiny pinch of salt. My mom said that really helps to, I don't know, make so that the applesauce isn't quite as tart and just like brings out the flavor. You don't wanna overdo the salt. You don't want salty applesauce. I don't wanna add much maple syrup because I don't wanna make my applesauce more runny, but I'm just gonna do a tiny bit. We also have honey from our bees right now that I could add to this, but I just thought it was a bit of a shame to heat the honey up and take away some of those properties. Also keep in mind that applesauce will taste sweeter once it's cold. I think that's perfect. You better let me try it. Cody always thinks my stuff needs more sugar. I mean, it's good. Yeah, it does have more depth. I mean, it could probably be a little bit sweeter. These, I think, are ready to go through the strainer. All right, Cade, put them through. This is the last big bowl to cook and I'm gonna add the raspberries in with this one. Oh, I hope they fit. I might need the other kettle. This is gonna be very pink. That's gonna be pretty cool. The raspberries made this batch a little bit more watery. So I took a little, ouch. I took a little bit of the juice off. I wanna get this applesauce into the jars before it cools down. It's really nice to have hot sauce. It takes much less time to can if it's hot. Mm -hmm. 
The raspberry applesauce is ready. It smells really good. I'm hoping it's not too thin. The raspberries released a lot of juice. I need my canner, so I'm gonna have to pour this over here. Look how pink that is. That's awesome. Eden's gonna love that. The experiment with superb lids continues. So far, I have absolutely loved these lids. I have no complaints. I've used them in the pressure canner. I have used them with water bath canning, all with great success. So I've pretty much switched over to superb completely. If you guys would like to try these out too, we have a 10% discount code for you and we'll drop a link in the description. I'm gonna water bath can this applesauce for 20 minutes. This stuff is so pretty. Michelle doesn't trust me, but I'm gonna whip up some cinnamon sugar to put in that other batch of applesauce. That looks like a lot, but that's a big bowl of applesauce. Don't trust me. This is gonna be the best <laughs> applesauce you ever had. I think it could actually be a little sweeter. It's really good. I think sweeter. you should cool it though before you add more sugar. Yeah, I think I know it needs more sugar. It doesn't need more cinnamon. Back off. <laughs> this is mine. It's good. Not bad, Cody. <laughs> I do try not to eat too much sugar. I know that it's not healthy to have too much. But you know, I have heard that if you take all of the sugar out of your diet, you're also about 80% less happy. This raspberry sauce is a little bit more runny than the other apple sauce, and so I don't wanna add very much maple syrup to it. I've only been adding like, probably not even a cup to like a huge bowl like this, because this apple sauce is pretty sweet. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of sugar and then a little bit of maple syrup, and hopefully this stuff won't get any runnier than it already is. This stuff definitely needs some sweetener because the raspberries made it a lot more tart. So they definitely added to the depth of the flavor too, but then it's just a little bit more tart. I think this applesauce is a really good example of a part of homesteading that you can do even if you don't have your own homestead. I've heard a lot of people say that they wish they had land so that they could be more self-sufficient and provide good food for their families. The most important thing in getting started with homesteading is to start where you are and with what you have. It would be nice if these were our own apples, but it really is okay. I think there is just as much value in quote local sufficiency as there is in self-sufficiency. We get our milk from a local homesteader, we got these apples from a local orchard, we get plants from a local greenhouse in the spring. Supporting other local farms and making connections is very valuable. And even though these weren't our own apples, this is still high quality food on our pantry shelf preserved for the winter. And you could accomplish this with a lot of other foods as well, no matter where you are. I'm ready for my very last canner full of applesauce. It's after six o'clock, so it's getting a little bit late. There ended up being 32 quarts of applesauce from our two bushels of apples. We're very pleased with that. And so far, they have all sealed. On our supper table is rice and beans from our store of bulk goods, salsa that we canned from ingredients grown in our garden, chicken that we raised on our pasture, and applesauce that we made ourselves with apples we bought from a local orchard. I don't know of anybody that has arrived at 100% self-sufficiency. Thankfully, that's not the most important thing about homesteading because that's not even our goal. The most important thing is a happy and healthy life for your family. And if the way you do that looks different than someone else, that's totally okay. Hey you. <laughs> So you gotta get a little bit of cottage cheese and a little bit of applesauce. 
So good. Takes me back to my childhood. It has been a long day and we kind of just showed you one thing that we did with preservation here on our homestead. But if you want to see a whole day on our homestead, what it's like, watch this video next. Yeah, you're not living if you've never made applesauce.